profiling your data sources. This nugget kind of ties back into the previous module of designing and implementing a data warehouse. SSIS comes with a really cool task that can connect to a data source and tell you all about the specific details of that data source, such as what percentage of this column is null? What is the longest value written in this text field? How frequently does data get written to this table or this column? All of these things help you understand what your data sources are and what data out of that data source is actually useful and usable to you so that you can then design your data warehouse or load it quicker. So what specific data can we actually get out of this? We can get column statistics out of it, which is great. We can get null ratios. We can get profiles on our column lengths and our column values. And we can even understand all of the links and keys using functional patterns or functional dependencies. Now, important things to know is that this data will all be written to an XML file, and we will use the SSIS data profiler task to write to that XML file, but to actually view that XML file, we're gonna have to open a tool called the SQL Data Profiler. It's very easy to do, so what I say is we just hop in the virtual lab, fire up client nug, and get going. With Visual Studio open, we're gonna get connected to our previously open solutions here. We're gonna open Integration Services Project 3, and then the Project 3 solution, and it launches us right into Package 2. Let's go ahead and open our Solution Explorer here, and let's give Package 1 a double click. And let's just clean this up a little bit. Let's right click on the File System task and click Delete. Okay, what we're doing here is we're dealing with the Data Profiling task right here on the left-hand side of the toolbox. This is a Control Flow task. Let's go ahead and drag it onto the screen, and let's give it a right click and an Edit. And first things first, like we were just talking about, we need to have a file connection and we're going to be connecting to an XML file. So let's go ahead and just click on our little drop down. We're going to choose a new file connection. And let's choose to create this file. Let's browse. And let's go ahead and put this back in our CBT files. How about that? We'll do C drive and then CBT files. And let's go ahead and give this a name like data profile.xml. And we'll say open. And we'll say OK. And if we want to reuse this same XML for multiple profiles later down the road, we can just go ahead and turn this overwrite destination to true. I'll go ahead and set that to true. Why not? Now, what I'm going to do now is down here in the bottom right, I'm going to click on Quick Profile. And notice this isn't using an OLEDB connection. This is using an ADO.NET connection. So we do have to set up a new connection even to get to our already existing OLEDB. We'll go ahead and just set this to SQL Nug. If we click the drop down here, it's going to try and retrieve that list of servers. Let's just see if something's there. And it is. Let's go ahead and click SQL Nug. We'll use Windows Authentication. And let's set the database to be that Wide World Importers OLTP database. Here we go. And we'll say OK. Now we have the connection in place. Let's go ahead and choose a table to analyze. I like to analyze fact tables. You know, that way we can see what's changing rapidly. And if we have any nulls, that would also work for dimensions as well. So let's go to sales.orders. That sounds like a good one that we can analyze. And by default, this is what it is going to profile for us. If you're looking for patterns or dependencies, you can check that off. Or if you're not interested in any of this information, you can uncheck them. I'm going to leave the default in place because I'm perfectly fine with these items. I think these are interesting data. Let's hit OK. And it's going to show you just what all the profile requests are. This is, of course, the data that we just checked off. Now, notice if we select one of these items, it will actually change what is showing in the request properties here. If you actually want to look at the properties themselves, you can do that. The columns that are in place here, it's set to star. It's going to analyze every column. Because we chose the quick profile, it automatically populated these items for us. You can feel free to manually change these things as you see fit. Like for instance, there's this little drop down here and you can see the individual columns that are in place. For now, let's just click OK to complete this task. Let's right click on it and choose execute task to run the profile. And the profiling has succeeded. We can click the stop button here to exit debugging mode or Shift F5. And what we'll do now is we'll actually click Start. We're going to launch the SQL Server Data Profile Viewer by going under Microsoft SQL Server 2016. And we're going to scroll down just a hair to Data Profile Viewer here. Let's launch that. 
And let's open that XML file we just created. I believe that was in C drive, CBT files, data profile.xml. And it loads up our information in kind of this little hierarchical view. Let's go ahead and look at maybe our null ratio profiles. Check it out. Whoa, we've got comments is 100% null. We've got delivery instructions, 100% null, internal comments. So these are columns I obviously wouldn't want to create and include in my ETL process. This is just wasted compute. Do you see how that's really useful? We can look at some other interesting data like the column statistics. This will show us what the starting point and ending points are. If we actually have aggregations that we're interested in, we can look at the means and the standard deviations. We can look at the beginning date and the end date. I think this is really relevant if we're looking at our data partitioning. Where does our data start and where does our data stop? Some other things that are kind of neat are the column value distribution profiles. We can actually see some things like look at the number of distinct values here. We've got there's only one distinct value for is under supply back order. There's only 10 distinct values for the salesperson ID. And we can see how many times those show up. For instance, salesperson ID number two shows up 7,474 times which makes up 10% of our data. How neat is this information? So that's what the data profile viewer can do for us. We can now connect to our source data and really analyze what's going on in our tables so that we can now design and implement our ETL solutions in our data warehouse. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you.